module 18 screen print half two screen printing is a printing technique where a mash is used to transfer ink onto a substrate except in areas made impermeable to the ink by a blocking stencil a blade or squeegee is moved across the screen to fill the open mash apertures with ink and a reverse stroke then causes the screen to touch the substrate momentarily along a line of contact This causes the ink to wet the substrate and be pulled out of the mash apertures as the screen springs back after the blade has passed. Screen printing is also a stencil method of print making in which a design is imposed on a screen of polyester or other fine mash with blank areas coated with an impermeable substrate. Ink is forced into the mash openings by the fill blade or squeegee and by wetting the substrate. transferred onto the printing surface during the squeegee stroke time 3 screen printing is a form of stencilizing that first appeared it first appeared in a recognizable recognizable form in china during the song dynasty 19 960 to 1279 ad It was then adopted by other Asian countries like Japan and was further refined by creating newer methods. Screen printing was largely introduced to Western Europe from Asia sometimes in the late 18th century but did not gain large acceptance or use in Europe until silk mash was more available from trade from the east and a profitable outlet for the medium discovered. Screen printing is also a stencil method of print making in which a design is imposed on a screen of polyester or other fine mesh with blank areas coated with an impermeable substrate. Ink is forced into the mesh openings by the fill blade or squeegee and by wetting the substrate transferred onto the printing surface during the squeegee stroke. As the screen rebounds away from the substrate, the ink remains on the substrate. It is also known as silk screen, screen serigraphy and serigraph printing. One color is printed at a time, so several screens can be used to produce a multicolored image or design. There are various terms used for what is essentially the same technique. Time 5. Traditionally, the process was called screen printing or silk screen printing because silk was complete silk was used in the process prior to the invention of polyester mesh currently synthetic threads are commonly used in the screen printing process the most popular mesh in general use is made of polyester there are special use mesh material of nylon and stainless steel available to the screen printer there are also different type different types of mesh sizes which will determine the outcome and look of the finished design on the material Screen printing was introduced to Western Europe from Asia in the late 18th century but did not gain large acceptance or use in Europe until silk mesh was more available for trade from the east and a profitable outlet for the medium discovered. Early in the 1910s, several printers experimenting with photoreactive chemicals used the well-known actinic light, activated cross-linking or hardening traits of potassium, sodium or ammonium chromate and dichromate chemicals with glues and gelatin compounds. Roy Beck, Charles Peter and Edward Oynes studied and experimented with chromic acid salt synthesized emulsions for photoreactive stencils. The trio of developers would prove to revolutionize the commercial screen printing industry by introducing photo-imaged stencils to the industry. So the acceptance of this method would take many years. Commercial commercial screen printing now uses synthesizers for safer and less toxic than bichromates. Currently there are large selections of pre-synthesized and user mixed synthesized emulsion chemicals for creating photoreactive stencils, photoreactive stencils. A group of artists who later formed the National Serigraphic Society coined the word serigraphy in the 1930s to differentiate the artistic application of screen printing from the industrial use of the process. Serigraphy is a word formed from Latin sericum, silk and Greek graphian to write or draw. Time 7:45. While coating the screen, make a thin, smooth, even coating on both sides of the screen. 
trying to avoid trips and runs. Time 8. Now place the screen in the dark room to dry out. Make sure the emulsion on the screen is completely dry on both sides before attempting to begin. Artwork. Print out the inked surface has to be turned towards the emulsion on the screen. Do not turn on the lights as the screen is still light sensitive. The screen has to be laid down on the glass of light table or sunlight duration for exposing to light box. Carefully keep the screen frame on the artwork transparency and with uni- and with proper pressure. Ensure there is even contact between the screen and the artwork. Turn on the lights of the light box for exposing for 5 minutes or sun- or sunlight timings is according sunlight intensity 1 or 1 or half minute in 1907 samuel simon patented screen printing in england at first the process was used to print interesting colors and patterns on wallpaper and fabrics and then by advertisers eventually however it was adopted by artists as a convenient as a convenient and reliable way of reproducing their works in today's contemporary world screen printing is used by fine artists along with commercial printers who use graphic screen printing to place images on t-shirts dvds glass paper metal and wood in the 1930s a group of artists who wanted to differentiate what they did from the commercial world formed the national serigraphic society In doing so they linked the word serigraphy with fine arts and screen printing. In recent history the pop artists are generally seen to have popularized the form of screen printing known as serigraphy. Time 8:15. Keep the screen frame on the artwork and with adequate pressure ensuring even contact between screen frame and artwork. Pop artists took their images from the world of mass culture so it was appropriate that they used a technique known for its mass production ability all artists would value the use of the medium finding it suited their aesthetics screen printing is arguably the most versatile of all printing processes since rudimentary screen printing materials are affordable and readily available it has been used frequently in underground settings and subcultures and the non professional look of such diy culture screen prints have become a significant cultural aesthetics cultural aesthetics seen on movie posters record album covers flyers shirts commercial fonts in advertising in artwork and elsewhere time 915 clean the screen frame with water immediately please 918 dry in sunlight clean exposed artwork frame in the 1960s first eduardo paolizzi and then andy warhol began to use screen printing as a fine art technique Many artists have used the medium to reproduce imagery appropriated from popular culture and challenge ideas about what could be art. Contemporary artists like Ryan McGinnis follow in their footsteps. In screen printing, the screen is first created by stretching a fabric, example silk, over a frame of wood or aluminum. The image is first drawn manually or with software. on a piece of paper or plastic or captured in a photograph then it is cut then it is cut out to form a stencil next the stencil is attached to the screen then areas of the screen mesh are blocked with a waterproof masking medium these areas become the negative areas of the final image the screen is then placed over the desired substrate example paper glass textile and ink is then applied to the top of the screen and spread across the screen over the stencil and through the open mesh onto the substrate underneath the ink is spread using a squeegee a rubber plate usually the same width as the screen the unblocked area is where the ink filters through the filters through and creates the image any number of colors can be used although a separate screen is required for each color The stencil designs are generally created using software programs like Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. 
The designs are then printed on clear vellum, which is referred to as the film positive. Time 12.30 Cover the inner corner of the screen frame with cellotape and prepare color ink. This is now ready for printing. Mark the final registration on the screen table. Although screen printing is in principle a simple stencil process, the kinds, the kinds of images which can be produced cover a wide spectrum. Depending on the stencil used, the artist can produce a range of effects from broad, simple areas to find, detailed, even photographic images. This wide range is broadened further by the use of various combinations of transparent and opaque colors and by printing on various kinds of paper. The stencils are printed sequentially one color at a time, one over the other. Each color is printed in turn on all copies in the addition before the next color is applied. Thus, the size of the addition cannot be increased after the second stencil has been printed, assuming that the stencils are destroyed after each printing, which is usually the case. Because screen printing was a preferred medium of the op artist, it became the predominant printmaking technique in the 1960s and 1970s. Important artists of that time were Henry Sternberg, Roy Winchestian, Andy Warhol, Robert Indiana, Nicholas Krushnik, Victor Vasarle, Joseph Albus, R.B. Kitaj, Robert Rauschenberg, Richard Hamilton, and many others. Time 14. Example Artist Andy Warhol Andy Warhol was born on 6 August 1928 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and was an American artist who was a leading figure in the visual art movement known as pop art. His works explored the relationship between the artistic expression, celebrity culture and advertisement that flourished by the 1960s. After a successful career as a commercial illustrator, Warhol became a renowned and sometimes controversial artist. The Andy Warhol Museum in his native city, Pittsburgh, holds an extensive permanent collection of art and archives. It is the largest museum in the United States dedicated to a single artist. Warhol's art used many types of media, including hand drawing, painting, printmaking, photography, cell screening, sculpture, film, and music. He was also a pioneer in computer-generated art using Amiga computers that were introduced in 1984, two years before his death. He founded Interview magazine and was the author of numerous books including The Philosophy of Andy Warhol and Popism. The Warhol 60s He managed and produced The Velvet Underground, a rock band which had a strong influence on the on the evolution of punk rock music. He is also notable as a gay man who lived openly as such before the gay liberation movement. His studio, The Factory, was a well-known gathering place that brought together distinguished intellectuals, drag queens, playwrights, bohemian street people, Hollywood celebrities, and wealthy patrons. At a very young age, Warhol battled a disease of the nervous system which rendered him bad ridden for days on end. It is here that he drew, listened to the radio and collected pictures of movie stars, movie stars around his bed. Warhol later described this period as very important in the development of his personality, skill set and preferences. Time 1610 Prepare the ink to be used and apply it on the screen and pull the squeegee softly with color. The color will pass through the cloth onto the paper. During the 1950s, Warhol gained fame for his whimsical ink drawings for shoe advertisements. These were done in a loose, blotted ink style and figured in some of his earliest showings at the Bodily Gallery in New York. With the concurrent rip Concurrent rapid, with the concurrent rapid expansions of the record industry and the in, introduction of the vinyl record, hi-fi and st stereophonic recordings, RCA records hired Warhol along with another freelance artist, Sid Maurer. 
to design album covers and promotional materials. Warhol was an early adopter of the silk screen printmaking process as a technique for making paintings. His earliest silk screening in painting involved hand-drawn images, though it this soon progressed to the use of photographically derived silk screening in paintings. Prior to entering the field of fine art, Warhol's commercial art background also involved innovative techniques for image making that were somewhat related to printmaking techniques. When rendering commercial objects for advertising, Warhol devised a technique that resulted in a characteristic image. His imagery used in advertising was often executed by means of applying ink to paper and then blotting the ink while still wet. This was akin to a printmaking process on the most rudimentary scale. Time 1650. Mark the final print on the final paper and take the edition. Warhol's work, both as commercial artist and later a fine artist, displays a casual approach to image making, in which chance plays a role and mistakes and unintentional marks are tolerated. The resulting imagery in both Warhol's commercial art and later in his fine art endeavors is often replete with imperfection. Smudges and smears can often be found. In his book, Popism, Warhol writes, When you do something exactly wrong, you always turn up something. By the beginning of 1960s, Warhol had become a very successful com became Warhol had become a very successful commercial illustrator. His detailed and elegant drawings for first Miller shoes were particularly popular. They consisted, they consisted mainly of blotted ink drawings or monoprints, a technique which he applied in much of his early art. Although many artists of this period worked in commercial art, most did so dis discreetly. Most did so discreetly. Warhol was so successful, however, that his profile as an illustrator seemed to undermine his efforts to be taken seriously as an artist. Pop art was an experimental form that several artists were independently adopting. Some of these pioneers, such as Roy Lynchstein, would later become synonymous with the moment. Warhol, who would become, who would become famous as the pop of Bob, Turn to this new style, where popular subjects could be part of the artist's palette. His early paintings show images taken from cartoons and advertisements, hand painted with paint with paint drips. Marilyn Monori was a pop art painting that Warhol had done, and it was very popular. Those drips. Emu those drips emulated the style of successful abstract expressionists, such as William D. Koenig. Warhol's first pop art paintings were displayed in April 1961, serving as a backdrop for New York department store, Bronwyn Teller's window display. This was the same stage his pop art contemporaries Jasper Johns, James Rosenquist and Robert Rauschenberg had also once graced. Eventually Warhol pared eventually Warhol pared his image vocabulary down to the icon itself, to brand names, celebrities, dollar signs and removed all traces of the artist's hand in the production of his paintings. Time 20 he loved celebrities, so he painted them as well. From these beginnings, he developed his later style and subjects. Instead of working on a signature subject matter, as he started out to do, he worked more and more on a signature style, slowly eliminating the handmade from the artistic process. Warhol frequently used cell screening. His later drawings were traced from slight projections. At the height of his frame as a as a painter, Warhol had several assistants who produced his, produced his cell screen multiples following his directions to make different versions and variations. 
Warhol's early commercial illustration has recently been acclaimed as the as the arena in which he first learned to manipulate popular tastes. His drawings were often comic, decorative, and whimsical, and their tone is entirely different from the cold and impersonal mood of his pop art. Much debate still surrounds the I- iconic screen printed images with which Warhol established his reputation as a pop artist in the early 1960s. Some view his death and disaster series and his Marilyn pictures as frank expressions of his sorrow at public events. Others view them as some of the first expressions of compassion com- of compassion fatigue the way the public loses the ability to sympathize to sympathize with events from which they feel removed still others think of his pictures as screens placed between us and horrifying events which attempt to register and process shock although artist has drawn on popular culture throughout the 20th century pop art marked an important new stage in the breakdown between high and low art forms warhol's paintings and prints from the early 1960s were important in pioneering these developments but it is arguable that the diverse activities of his later years were just as influential in expanding the implications of pop art into other spheres and further eroding the borders between the worlds of high art and popular culture. Time 23 Although Warhol would continue to create paintings intermittently throughout his career, in 1965 he officially retired from the medium to concentrate on making experimental films. Despite years of neglect, these films have recently attracted widespread interest and Warhol is now seen as one of the most important filmmakers of the period. Critics have traditionally seen Warhol's career as going into decline in 1968 after he was shot by Valier Solanas. Valuing his early paintings above all, they have ignored they have ignored the activities that absorbed his attention in later years. Films, parties, collecting, publishing, and paintings commissioned portraits. Yet, some have begun to think that all these ventures make up Warhol's most important legacy, most important legacy because they prefigure the diverse interest, activities, and inventions that occupy artists today. Warhol died in Manhattan on February 22, 1985, 1987, in his sleep from a sudden post-operative cardiac arrhythmia. Post-operative cardiac arrhythmia. Arrhythmia. Post-operative cardiac arrhythmia. Cleanliness and orderliness. Cleanliness and orderliness is very important to the screen printing process. Besides its Besides it impacting the overall bottom line by keeping individual color individual colors from being contaminated, for example, is also may it also may prevent injuries. Be sure to have designated places for all your inks, equipment and tools to be stored. Spend less time locating missing tools or equipment and avoiding tripping over misplaced buckets and cuts stemming from misplaced razor blades or knives. Chemical safety precautions. Many chemicals are used in and around the screen printing process. Many of these chemicals are solvents used to clean screens, spills and equipments while others are mixed into the ink to increase or lessen its viscosity. Since chemicals can be inhaled or absorbed through the skin, Use any solvents in well-vented areas only and wear gloves where necessary. Time 26 It is a good idea to use preventive measures that protect your preventive measures that protect your eyes, skin and nose to prevent inhalation when handling chemicals. Read the labels of any chemicals to determine which safety precautions you should take. A product's material safety data sheet MSDS also lists first aid measures and more safety instructions. 
equipment safety training if a workplace has any electronic equipment be it a flash cure unit dryer or automatic printing machine each person should be trained on how to safely use it be sure that the machines also have the necessary safety guards or covers in, pl- in place so that the engine parts are not exposed stay alert many accidents happen many accidents happen in the workplace due to lack of alertness or common sense to help combat tiredness or drowsiness take breaks and stay hydrated moving or walking around also will help energize the mind and body keep distractions to a minimum when working in a when working in a fast in a fast paced environment especially around automated equipment whether the distraction comes in the form of music cell phones computers or interaction with the interaction with other co-workers minimize distractions to focus on the task at hand time zero write all details of print and the signature